Welcome to Electron Online, and now in this video we're going to take a look at the equations that describe the current in the circuit and the voltage across each component as well as the voltage across the whole circuit as a function of time. And so here we're going to simply come up with the equations. Here again we have an RCL circuit, an inductor, a resistor, a capacitor, an oscillating voltage supply. The numbers really don't really mean that much right now, it's just simple as an example. We know how to find the inductive reactants, the capacitive reactants based upon the frequency and the inductance and the capacitance. Let's say that the values come out to be what they are here, 300 ohms, 200 ohms, and 200 ohms. And we know we have a phase angle of 26.57 degrees based on the fact that it's the arc tension of the reactants divided by the resistance. Remember the reactants, X, that's the total reactance is simply equal to x sub l minus x sub c. So in this case, it would be 300 ohms minus 200 ohms gives us 100 ohms divided by the resistance of 200 ohms, and that gives us the phase angle. And so here's the phase angle, phi, and the phase angle represents the phase difference between the current when the current reaches a maximum value and when the voltage reaches a maximum value in the circuit. And in this case, notice that time moves forward this way, so voltage is already ahead of the current, so voltage leads to current by 26.57 degrees. Notice that a phase, a phase diagram or a phasor diagram like this simply represents the voltages of all the components, the voltage across the circuit and the current in the circuit. At any moment in time, this phasor diagram simply will rotate around like this at the frequency omega times the time that gives us, of course, the phase difference between when it started at time equals zero to some later time on the circuit. So what are the equations that re represent the current and the voltages in the circuit? Well, the current is right here. The current is always in phase with the voltage across the resistor. Notice they've turned through an angle of omega t. So therefore we can say that I is equal to I max, the maximum current in the circuit, times the cosine of omega t. So let's just write it like that. So notice that if t is equal to zero, it would be zero angle and it's simply I would equal I max. So at that moment you'd have the maximum current. At this moment the current has waned somewhat because the angle omega t is getting bigger and as the angle gets bigger the cosine of the angle gets smaller so you can see that the current is dropping off from its maximum value. How about the voltage across the resistor? Well they're in phase so we expect a similar equation. In this case that would be equal to V max times the cosine of omega t. So same equation except for voltage instead of current. Notice the voltage max comes from your voltage supply and I max, I max, simply would come from taking the maximum voltage in the circuit divided by the total impedance of the circuit. Remember that the impedance Z is equal to the square root of X squared plus R squared. Oop, I want that to be squared, there we go. X of course being the reactance, that was 100 ohms, R being the resistance that was 200 ohms in this case. All right, what about the voltage across the inductor? Now notice that the voltage across the inductor is 90 degrees ahead in time, ahead in phase, compared to the voltage across the resistor. So therefore we have to add the 90 degrees. And so we get that's equal to V max times the cosine of omega t plus the 90 degrees because the inductor is already 90 degrees ahead in phase compared to the resistor. How about the capacitor? Well, since it's 90 degrees behind in phase, that becomes V max times the cosine of omega t minus 90 degrees because it lags by 90 degrees compared to the voltage across the resistor. And then finally, the voltage across the whole circuit, there we have, that would be equal to V max times the cosine of omega t, and we have to add the phase angle to get the proper voltage. Notice that instead of having just omega t, it would be omega t plus the phase angle, and that's what we have right there. So those are the equations describing the current in the circuit and the voltages across each component as well as the voltage of the whole circuit as a function of time, and that's how we calculate their independent voltages at any moment in time in the circuit. That's how we do that.